we were talking, you know, umbrella is like protection. But it protects from two things. Rain, storms, something like this, you know, or even hailstones. Sometimes you get hail. I don't know if you get hail here in Malaysia, probably not. No? It's too hot for that. But in India, you get ole, you know, proper like they fall on your head, they bust your head open. See the good umbrella. But also, so it's, it's sun from the, from the hot as well, the hot sun. So what are these two things for us? What is the rain, the storm of the world? And what is the sunshine of the world? What is the heat? Yeah? Okay, what do we need protection from? Maya. Maya. Okay, it's a beautiful pankti of Bani. Kal tati thanda harnao. Simmer simmer sada sukhpao. Kal jug is like hot. Tati. Yeah? And then the shabad you re- most people read every evening. You know that shabad? It's about tati. It's a krakhya de shabad. Tati vaon lagay par brahm sarnai. Right? How does it manifest itself? How does this maya manifest itself? Okay, greed, yeah? So, that's a good idea. So we got the pancho, right? Kaam, krod, lob, mohankar. You know, if you think about this, these things, that greed, you literally burn. When you feel greed coming onto you, you literally feel like you are burning. There's heat inside your body. Yeah? Hot. Kaljuk is like hot. It's burning you, right? And there, Mara says, Kalatati thanda harnao. Yeah? Mara says, the name is Thanda. Because you have this book for Maya, book is this heat, this greed, who must want more money. You know, you, I'll give you an example, right? Visargai sab taat parai. Taat is like desire. What kind of greed, you know, makes us forget Vaheguru? If you think about, like somebody sitting and they got, like, you know, like you got phones, and most young people, you understand this. So you get a nice phone, it's working fine. Along comes a brand new model. Samsung releases Edge. Then somebody comes up with the Edge. And you're like, oh, look at this. And then suddenly what happens? Previously we were happy with our phone. Now we start burning. Say, oh, you know, I want that phone. Yeah? We're happy with what we had before. Then suddenly, Kaljuk is coming. And it makes us feel unhappy with what we have. And you know what it is? If you look at TV, all of TV is about getting you to feel unhappy with what you have. All the advertisements, they only work on the principle, let's make you unhappy with what you have. And then what will happen? You will get greedy. You will go and buy. They want to make you buy. They won't make you buy by you sitting comfortably with what you have. They won't say, oh, you know, you're happy. Be happy with what you have. Have you seen an advert that says be happy with what you have? No. Why don't they have that? Why don't they teach you contentment? Because contentment is opposite to consumption. Nobody who is content will spend any money. You're no good as a, cons- as a consumer if you don't buy stuff. Unless you throw away old stuff and buy new stuff, you're no good to anybody. Modern society needs you to buy stuff. Yeah? That's how the economy works. They get upset when people don't buy stuff. Yeah? When, people, when the economy goes down, it's because people aren't spending money. So they make you feel unhappy. So you buy. So greed is programmed into TV. You want to avoid greed, maybe you start with turn the TV off. Yeah? How can we stay away from the, the hot fire? Mara says, Kal tati thanda har nao. Guruji is the one who gives us naam, right? When it comes to uh, this uh, naam, Guru Sahib says, Deho naam santokhiya utre man ki pukh. If I forget all of the greed, I don't feel greedy about somebody else, what they have, that's because I'm content. So contentment for us comes from now. And the Guru gives now. So if Guru is my umbrella, how does he do this? What is the umbrella? Now. Naam is the umbrella. When we're living under the protection of Naam, then Maya, in one main form, greed, won't touch us because inside you're content. I remember when I first took Amrit, I was very fresh into Sikhi, you know. Um, I had took Amrit when I was only had a dadi about this long, you know. Just kept my case and took Amrit straight away. So I was sitting at my cousin's house. And my cousins are like, they follow Sikhi. They have their Guru Granth Sahib Ji at home. They, they follow Sikhi more than my family. That's what I thought back then. And I, I'm talking to my cousin. And, you know, they love, they used to love buying expensive things like nice BMW car, big house, show off to the world what they have. 
And I, I was talking to my cousin, I said, listen, your family tells you, this is the truth, this is what they were telling, most people might get told this, that once you have got a good job, you got a good house, you got a nice car, then you can, and you are married, you have kids, then you are happy. Happiness is defined by certain things to achieve. I said, now hold on, what if you started off happy? You're happy as you are, because you got now. So here, whether you get a big house and a big car and a family, it's irrelevant. You get it or you don't get it, it's irrelevant, because you're already happy. You're happy all the way through. There's no, th- nothing to aim for for happiness. You start off happy. Yeah? They were like, how can you do that? See, we've been convinced, yeah? The happiness lies in things. Guru Sahib is saying, Deho naam santokhiya utre man ki pukh. The pukh will go when we have the connection to Vaheguru. Now, let me just talk quickly about naam. Right? Let's do a little bit of simran, then we'll talk about naam. Okay? Vaheguru. Okay. Vaheguru. 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 Vahe Guru 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 So everybody was jumping Vahe Guru, right? Some people are feeling Vaheguru, some people were not feeling Vaheguru. You understand, no? Some people connected, they experienced Vaheguru, Sikhis by that experience, Tasamdwar is here, Trikuti is here, Ava Hirda is here. To return a few Vaheguru, it's an experience, it's full of bliss. Some people experienced Vaheguru when they were saying Vaheguru, other people just sat there saying Vaheguru. We asked, Guru Sahib, give me Naam. But we already have the Naam, Vaheguru. If Naam means name, then we already have the name, Vaheguru. We keep asking for more Naam. What do we want? We say, Maharaj, give me your name. What are we asking for? We have to must understand what this word Naam means. Because Naam is the connection. So people are asking for, Maharaj, give me the Naam. I connect me to you. Let me experience you. When I say your name, let me experience you. Naam is not just name. Naam is that experience of Vaheguru, the connection. Yeah? The experience. We're asking, Deho Naam. Let me experience you. And what will happen with that experience? Contentment. We'll get happy within ourselves. We won't need anything else to make us happy. We'll get contentment. Deho naam santokhiya. Uttre man ki The mind itself is hungry. Even nowadays, your body is full, but you still eat more. Body is full. Tetted bariya. But man ni bariya. Man goes, have more. Body goes, I'm full. Have more. Why? Man is greedy. Man ki poknu marna ya. Yeah? So here Maharaj is telling us first, now lust. We got, you guys are young. So this is going to be an issue for everybody here who's young. This is, now why is it an issue? People say, you know, calm is so hard when I'm young. It's so crazy when I'm young. When I, at this teenage. The only reason it's crazy right now it's because you just now found out about it. You've never experienced this before. See, when we're children growing up, 
Calm is like, what's that all about? Suddenly, you hit teenagehood, bang, something new comes inside your body. You're like, what's this stuff? So it's like a crazy new emotion we have to learn to understand. Yeah? Greed we have from babies. Babies greedy for milk, they want more. We know about greed, we learn to control our greed a little bit. We learn to control our attachment a little bit. These things, but calm just now is new into the body, right? In teenagehood. So it's something new to us. When you get to like 30, 40, that's something that you learn to live with because you've lived with it for 25 years, yeah? But at this time, you just had like a couple of years to learn to deal with it and you haven't yet so started to bring it into control, yeah? So this time, Mara says, this is the wrong time to even indulge calm because you haven't learned how to deal with it, yeah? The problem is the world is trying to introduce calm to us very young. So this is a big problem for youth. They think, should I indulge this, uh, this desire with me or not? And well, Maharaj is telling us, no outside marriage. Why? Because there, in marriage, it has a sanjam. It has some kind of like, thing to give it a boundary. Yeah? It's within some kind of rehat. Yeah? Like, at this age, if we start to go into boyfriend-girlfriend stuff, then there's no restriction. We have real problems. Yeah? So Mara is telling us in Sikhi, there is no boyfriend, girlfriend stuff. I have to make this clear sometimes because people say, make it, you know, they don't know what's the, what's the view. In Sikhi, there's no such thing like dating. Yeah? If somebody is of a suitable age to get married, to get married, not just to date, to get married, then we might look at partners that are suitable for marriage. Not just to mess about with, to marry. So you have A, looking to get married and is of the right age to get married and B, is looking to get married and is of the right age to get married now they have a, what do they have a? a rishta not a dating, not a dating relationship they get a rishta, they get engaged now everybody knows, okay these two are going to get married okay, now they can spend time together but not break their head right? the opposite is happening nowadays a is not ready to get married, doesn't want to get married. B is not interested in getting married, is not, is not of the right age to get married. And then they're going out with each other and the parents don't know and there's no societal uh, knowledge about it. That's pure Kaljug, that's purely outside Sikhi. Yeah? There is a, there's a purpose to calm and the purpose is within marriage. Outside of marriage there is no purpose to it. Yeah? It's just a disease then. You know? Even the, you know, when you go to a doctor to get a cure, sometimes they give you a disease. But that disease, disease is like a weakened form of that disease and it helps you to cope with a big thing. So everything has a purpose and calm is only for marriage. It's not for outside marriage. Okay? So, and this is like a fire. Yeah? Anybody who's been through calm knows it's like a fire and it burns. Yeah? And we feel attacked by it. Mara says, Kal tati thanda harna. At that moment, if we take that energy and we take it from that fire and bring it into Naam and control it, then it gives, the Naam will cool us down. Like almost to say, have a cold shower. Have a shower of Naam as well. It's a cold shower. Have a shower of Naam at that time. That will help you to control this. It's not that you're not meant to uh, have calm, it's meant to be there, but not before marriage. Okay, the Maya, hot sun. So, calm, krod, lob, moh, ahankar. Even ahankar, oh my gosh. Ahankar is like a pride. You notice that someone criticizes you, you burn. How dare that person say this to me? To me? <laughs> I can't believe it. You're burning with fire. You know, your face is like, you have to say something. Yeah? You have to get back at that person. You have to get your, your revenge. Yeah? Fire. Kal tati thanda harna. Now at that moment in time, how can we bring ourselves back away from the fire with our Guru's mat? Guru is in the mat as well, yeah? Gurmat and Naam. Gurmat and Naam mera pran sakhai, yeah? So Gurmat and Naam, these are the two things that are going to give us that umbrella. Guru's wisdom. Can somebody tell me um, when, what wisdom we can use if somebody's cast, criticized us and we're burning with fire? Who knows some Bani Pankti that can help? 
Come on, man. You've got to use medicine. Naam is a Dawai, right? You've got to use Bani as your medicine. You're feeling greedy? You can say, Deho Naam Santo Kiya, Utre Man Ki Pukh. Deho Naam Santo Kiya, Utre Man Ki Pukh. You can say that ten times, and that's your medicine. Umbrella up. Suddenly, the fire of Naam is not touching you anymore. Because you use med- Bani as a medicine. Now you have lust, and you can say, Dekh Parayya Changiya. Mama, Pana, Tiya Jani. You can say that, look at other women in a, in a good way. They're like your mother, your sister, or your daughter. Look upon other women as your... You know, you can say these things to your eyes. You can say, don't look this way. And suddenly the calm starts to go away. Because using Gurmat as your umbrella from the fire of the sun. You know when the sun is coming down? It's like so hot. <sighs> umbrella up. Oh. Now what can we use for this then? For Ahankar. Give me some Pankti's for Ahankar. Lokan ki chatrai upma te baisantar jar koi pala kaho paave bura kaho hum tan diyu hai taar you can say you know je lok salahan ta teri upma je ninde ta shod na jai yeah people keep bigging you up people bigging you up you can say oh I don't need that yeah you know Mara says like write down the name write down this uh, pride and burn it yeah burn all the, all the pride. Lokan ki chatrai upma te baisantar jar. Burn it in fire. You can do that. But also, if somebody says bad to you, yeah, you can say, Sheikh Friji, Kale mande kapde, Kala manda ves, Guni pariya me phira, Lok kehen darves. Yeah. Say, I am married. If somebody says to you, you are so wrong, you are such a bad person, you say, ha ham nahi change, bura nahi koi. You can say, I am bad. Such a ham papi, tum pap khandan. Yeah? There's so many pankti's to help us to remember the gurmat. And what is that? That's our umbrella. Yeah? So we don't start burning with that fire. Okay, let's look at kaam ko lob mo ahankar. Lob mo ahankar. Lust, anger. What can we use for anger? Come on, anger is like a fire as well, isn't it? Ugh. People that get violent when they're angry, if you say to them, why were you acting violently? They will say, I saw red. Fire is red, no? They say, I saw red. I couldn't control myself. I had to do this. So they say, I haven't got any control anymore. That's not true. If you put a gun to their head, straight away they will stop. Where did the control come from? One minute, I'm out of control. Gun to the head, Calm right down. Where does control come from? The reality is we never let go of the control. We allowed ourselves to behave in an uncontrolled manner. The control was always there. We give ourselves excuses, I had no control. All these people that say, oh lust. You know the Monday at this age, this is the time when they start looking at the wrong thing on internet. Yeah? This is the wrong time. It's like, they say, I had no control, I couldn't help it. So of course you had control. It was your hand. It was your hand going over the mouse. No. Yeah? People excuse themselves of all this gun because they say, I had no control. The reality is we always have control. Don't say, I had no control. Understand, we came under the fire of these things and we let them overpower us. So what do we say for anger? How about, Bure ka palakar. <laughs> Bure ka palakar. Hanji. But you know Sikhs are all allowed to wear them, right? Yeah. They call them a ceremonial sword. Yeah. If I had one of them, I'd get arrested. Yeah, you probably would. Yeah. I'll I tell you why, why I'll tell you why, sir. Why is it a level playing field? Well, it is. You can become a Sikh and wear one. No one's stopping you. You're welcome to Sikhi. But I want to become a Sikh. Oh, no. If you're in England, yes, sir. you abide by our laws. Yes. Why, why, you're a guest here. No, so I was born here, sir. I was born here, sir. Yeah, you're born here, but well, you're still a guest. Okay, okay sir. Okay. If I commit a crime, I say, oh no, you can't arrest me, that's my religion. So it is, it's a crime to carry a weapon. Unfortunately, sir, it is not. For Sikhs, we're allowed, sir. We're different. There's one law for them and okay. one law for if me. If that's what you believe that is fine, sir, I will let you have that. Yeah. And uh, did you feel any bit of anger at that 
that wasn't me, that was my friend Jigmeet Singh. But he wasn't, no, he wasn't really angry. He just wanted to tell that person why it was. But you know, it's very easy to assume that man was racist. I had a conversation with Jigmeet Singh afterwards. The man was not being racist. He was saying the principle is that everybody should have the same rights. And he was right in that principle. To an extent, we should have the same rights. The problem is, is that in society, if you give everybody the same rights, it affects some people differently. Right? So if you say to people, everybody has a right to stand on the floor, and the wall is six foot high, and the short person can't see over the wall. Tall people can see over the wall, short people can't. So that's not fair. So we have disability rights. So rights for people that are giving them extra rights so they can be equal. Same way with the Kirpan. If you say to people, you can't be armed, that's fine. But the, the Sikh has to have the right to be armed because it's part of his religion. You're denying him his faith by denying him the Kirpan or her the Kirpan. So you don't have to be angry. The thing is, is many people, like I had this debate with this Muslim guy. That's like a bit of an old video. Now some people might not have seen it, but it's got like a lot of views on YouTube. It's like 600,000 views. It's a Muslim guy. People were saying, why don't you just knock him out? He's so being so annoying and arguing with you for one hour. He said, I could not have coped with him, I would have just hit him one. And I was like, I was just trying to understand the guy intellectually. What was he saying? What was his argument? I didn't understand it at the beginning. Most of the time, I, was, I couldn't even get angry. I was like, what are you saying? I don't understand his rhetorical devices, but stuff he was coming out with. So, we don't have to get angry. There's no reason to get angry. People are confused about Sikhi because they don't know. So understand that ignorance leads to um, uh, uh, misunderstandings. So our job as a Sikh is to clear up that ignorance. Yeah? And we should be shant. In fact, the word sant, if you look at the pada art of the word sant, it comes from the word shant. So if Guru Sahib is saying, I'm not saying I'm not a sant. No way. But I'm saying that Guru Sahib is telling us, be a sant sepahi. Yeah? And the whole point of this kalta ti thandahar now, is that the naam gives you that chilled out moment. And believe you me, if you jump naam in the morning, there is a physical experience of cold. It's cold and cooling. Sital is cold. Yeah? Man becomes sital. Becomes cool and calm because naam feels like a cold thing on your head. Like a cold shower. It's like, ah. Oh. Yeah? And when you have that naam, then slowly, slowly the things that worried you before, they don't affect you so much. People say bad to you. You know, like I'll give you an example, right? Husband, wife. Most people here aren't married, right? But when you get married, this is going to help you. Okay? So, kana kol ke sanam. Imagine, husband, husband is doing in the house, he's chilling and watching TV. Wife comes inside the house, very common experience. The wife comes in, shoes flying over there, t-shirt, coat lying on the floor somewhere, dishes not washed up, lying in the sink. What's going to happen next? <laughs> he's chilling out watching TV, right? And she's, so he's on a wavelength where he's chilled, right? He's thinking in his head, okay, those things I'm going to do after I chill out. After I chill out, I'm going to get up, I'm going to tidy up after myself. She comes in, she's busy, she's got to make stuff, she sees this mess, she goes, Le. he left it for me. Yeah? Now, what happens? She says, she gets angry. Instead of saying, can you please sort this out for five minutes and then go back to your TV? She gets angry because it's happened many times before. So she'll say, What is this? Every time I tell you, you do this, you do this wrong, you made a mess, I'm fed up. Now she's, she's angry. She's reacting with anger. She's not saying what she wants. She's just giving her anger first. What she wants is, get rid of this stuff and go back to what you're doing. Leave me alone. Just don't leave this mess. I, can't, I don't want to see it. But she doesn't say that. She comes with anger. Now, here's the thing that happens next. The guy's got two choices. Either you listen to the anger, or you listen to what's behind the anger. Yeah? Behind the anger is, tidy this stuff up, and go back to what you're doing. And don't do it again. But the guy will say, you've got two options now. Either he can say, you're right. Sorry, you said it to me many times, I forgot. I'll pick up this stuff, and I'll sit back down, watch my TV. No. What will he do? <laughs> no. He will say, you always give me stress. Can't you see I'm watching? Then, he will say, what about you? This morning or yesterday, you did this wrong. You never listened to me either. Now what's happened is, 
Instead of having one person get angrier, other person cool it down, and we've gone back to peace. Now one person got angry, other person's got even more angry. Now this person says, La, didn't even hear what I said. Didn't even pick up what I pick up with the clothes and he's now shouting back at me. How dare he? <laughs> and then I tell you something. Then they go bang. Next mukka comes even stronger, right? So now you're getting a war building up. The person say, you do this every time. Let me tell you something about you. <laughs> and they'll tell you something. What you did last week, the week after. Now the guy is feeling really attacked. He's trying to watch his TV. He thought he'll shout back and she'll, come, she'll leave him alone. Now he's thinking, she's behind my blood. And he reacts with even more anger. And then you have a fight building up. But if we listen to what's behind the anger, all at once, one person is upset with this stuff. Okay. So deal with it. Then, the, if, the, if the woman heard, Oh, I'm so sorry, I left these things in the way. Must be really annoying, I keep forgetting. Must really annoy you, I'm sorry. I'll tear it up, you carry on with your work. She's like, oh, only shanti will Yeah? So there's a way of listening to what's being said and not the anger. And anger is like irrelevant to listen to. Or then I'll go Fadani. Paying attention to the anger doesn't help anybody. Listen to the point behind the anger. The point is you have upset this person. And you probably have upset this person many, many times by doing the same thing over and over again. So just apologize for what you did wrong. Clear up. And that upset might go away. Now, the thing is, inside us are emotions. Emotions, they cloud your judgment. So the emotion comes up. Do we have to react? Well, this is the emotion. Maya manifests itself in these emotions. The emotion comes up, burns, fire is coming. What do you do next when a fire comes? Do you feed it? Do you feed the fire? Or do you cool it down? You should cool it down. So, the fire comes up, the emotion is there. Hold on to the emotion, don't react. If you have a little fire, you know like a light, you take it into the wind, it'll burn, right? How long will it burn for? In the wind, what will happen? A few seconds and it will go out. So it's not a permanent fire. It's got a little bit of fuel. The fuel will run out and it will stop burning. We think it will never go away. We think that calm will never go away. The calm comes up. You know, you're looking at something on TV or video. Suddenly you have a muddy thought. Then the muddy thought, you think, I must follow it. Let it go. Flick the channel. Mine's got many TVs. Flick the channel, move on to the next one. Right? Don't dwell upon it. Then you don't feed the fire and it will go away. Half an hour later you'll be wondering, look, what was I thinking about? Yeah? It will go. It won't go forever. It just, it'll just pass. Holy, holy. As you start to ignore it, what will happen? It will start to go away quicker. Anger comes up. Ignore the anger. Do the right thing. Holy, holy. The anger won't even come up that much. So there is a way of training the body and this is called training, literally training the mind. How can you win your mind? Tell me. Man jite jag jit. How can we win the mind unless we fight it every day? You can't keep feeding the mind every day and then next day say, now come under my control. Parents at the back, I'll give you an example, right? I've got kids as well, yeah? You know my kids, if I give them like, if I give them like two hours running around in the park, going crazy. Whatever they want, they can do. And then they can have ice cream, chocolate, everything they want, all the gandamand. Then I say, now calm down and sit down. Honani. Two hours running around, eating, cra being crazy, shouting, screaming. And then you say, sit down. What won't happen. You need to give, you have to come down really hard on the child. Sound harsh. To come down really hard on the child. Then the child might calm down. Then after half an hour, the child might sit down. To calm the child, oh, calm, shh, shh, there, there, leave it. Then the child might sit down for some time. So with us lot, we've never trained this mind, never ever ever said to the mind, listen, calm down. Never tried to give it a gurmat. Never said, oi, bure ka balagar. Yeah? We never say to the mind, to leave it alone, man, don't worry about it. To no koi mara kawe, to fikar na kar, don't get angry. Yeah? But Mara says, don't even do gussa on your mind. We don't think that way. So what happens? The mind is not prepared to listen because it's never been trained. So we have to train the mind like a little baby, yeah? train it to listen to us. No, 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 put engineer. 
What do we say every day in Anand Sahib? E man meria, tu sadar ho har nale. How can you talk to the mind? That's like crazy. If you go to psychology, say, I talk to my mind. They say, you're crazy. <laughs> Guru is talking to his, talking to his mind and not, not really, he's telling us to talk to our own mind. He's saying, talk to your mind. Say to the mind, E man meria, tu sadar ho har nale. Har nal ho tu man meri, duk sab visar na. Angi karo kare tira, kar je sab sawar na. Tell your mind what to do. This is called brain training. Train your mind, yeah? That's how you beat your mind. So, you got the hot sun of Maya. Yeah? Hopefully, these things will cool down. Now, let's look at the troubled things in the world. What is the rain and the storms? What kind of bad stuff do we go through? What is the tough times in life? Okay, getting bullied, right? Okay. Okay, financial problems, that's good. People stress about this a lot. Exams. Oh yeah, exams, yes. <laughs> Life in general. <laughs> Life. <laughs> Is this a problem like, oh, I'm alive. <laughs> oh, I'm alive. <laughs> Why am I alive? <laughs> Are you sure? Life's a promise. <laughs> like, why is this heart beating? Sala Mardani. This is the first week of the morning. Mohe Marne ka chao hai. This tends to happen, you know, with your married life. <laughs> you say they're watching TV. You get <laughs> somebody coming in. Why is this for me? Why? Say, come here, Mohe Marne ka So I want to die. Okay, life might be a problem. Okay. You know, Buddha said, he said, life is suffering. You know, he probably was going through suffering. He probably had the same problem. Like, oh, life is suffering, man. Okay, what else? What if lack of life, somebody might die in your family? That's very tough to deal with, right? So death, is it life? They're followed by death. Death is hard to deal with. Life is hard to deal with. We're stuck. What do we do about this conundrum? Naam hai marna, naam hai jina ki kari. So we've got death problems. What else? What other problems can we have? Multitude of problems, no? Married. Hanji? Getting influenced. Okay, so bad stuff, yeah? Bad influence. Mari Sangat. Kusangat. So I put it here. K-U. Sangat. You know the Pada Artha, you know, Akhi Artha of Sangat? Yesterday, Paisa was talking about Sangat. There's a beautiful meaning of Sangat. You know, Sang means together with somebody as a group and gati means movement moving together so you know like uh, I, when, uh, you know you, you've been in a run right you've been in a, a school when you go running what happens when somebody is like a bit unhealthy and they're at the back and everybody's running around what happens is, is that person is not helped to come along then they stay further and further back but if you help that person encourage him or her come to the front put them at the front then even though they thought previously, I can't do this, I can't do this, with a group, they can do it. Before, they feel very weak by themselves, but in a group you can do a lot more than if you do by yourself. So in the army, you know they always have marching songs, and you take your mind off the problem, you just march together and you can get it done. So a Sangat is that thing which helps you to achieve what you want to achieve, even though it's too hard to achieve it by yourself. With Sangat, it helps you to move together. Sangati, moving together on the same goal. So Kusangat has got the different goal to your goal. They're taking the other way. But Saad Sangat has got the same goal as what we have. Yeah? Ki manu sadhana. To sort the mind out, to fix the mind. So what do we do about bullying? How can we use the Guru's umbrella in bullying? How can Guru be our help in these times? Okay, Ardas. Very good thing. You know in Ardas, the beautiful Shabbat we sometimes say, Jisike sir upar tu swami so dukh kaisa paave? Yeah? Umbrella is on top of your head as well. Yeah? Guru is on top of our head. We think, if you're on top of me, how can I get hurt? If we have problems about bullying, we can say, Guru ka shabad rakhwaare, chauki chaugir thamare, Ram naam man laga, jam la jaye kar paaga, Prabhji tu mero sukhdata, bandhan kaat kare mandir mal pooran purak vidata. You know, Barney has so many Pankti's. It's a beautiful Shabbat Mahara says, Je sukh dehe ta tujhe aradhi, Dukh bhi tujhe te aai, 
जे पुख देह ता इत ही राजा दुख विच सुख मनाई मसे जे सुख दे आई विल वर्शिप यू फिगी मी सुख आई विल वर्शिप यू दुख भी तुझे ते आई इफ यू गिव मी दुख इवन देन आई विल वर्शिप यू आई विल रिमेंबर यू जे पुख दे इफ यू गिव मी हंगर देन आई विल स्टिल बी राजा होया मी नॉट बी स्टेइंग हंग हैप्पी इन हंगर दुख विच सुख मनाई बुलिंग इज नॉट गोना बी फॉरएवर इफ यू आर 13 You can go to your teachers and talk about it. You don't have to suffer in silence. You can ask people for help. But also, you understand that something is only temporary. It's not forever. You look at adults; they go over it. There's no more problems. When you're at school, it is difficult. But school does not last forever. Soon you'll be out. You bet. University is going to be a totally different mindset. Sometimes we have to go through tough times in life, and then we can say, "Ketiya duk puk sadamar ebe da teri da ta." So sometimes we have to learn to cope with certain things. Also, we can become stronger. Guru is our umbrella, but Guru is also telling us become fit, become strong, be brave. Nirpa hoi pa jo pa gawan, be strong. Don't just sit there going, "Hanji, yeah." Somebody comes out every day, makes fun of you, and you just take it. Why? Why you have to take it? First time you argue with them, next time you argue with them. Third time you argue with them. Fourth time they're going to say, "Forget it. This is troublesome. Let me go get some other victim." Somebody who keeps their head down and gets pushed around, they're going to get pushed around all the time. Somebody who argues again and again and again, even if you get beaten two, three times, four times, five times, six times, they're like, "Forget this. These guys are crazy. Let me go bully somebody else. It's easy to bully." You have to stand up for yourself. Yeah. So these both things need sun sapahi. We need a bit of sapahi. We need a bit of sun. Some people, you know, you're walking, you don't know this person, you can ignore them. They're saying something bad to you, cycling, and you go, "Oh, Osama," you know, Bin Laden. In England, we get this sometimes. You think, "Yeah, I don't care," right? They're up a lot of it, right? You walk on. But if somebody is making your life miserable, say something, do something. Don't be so weak as to just suffer in silence. That's not the sick way either. That's actually cowardice. Yeah. And coward is not part of sikhi. Nirpo, nirva. Don't hate the person, but have no fear either. Say something. Yeah. Say something straight. Look for friends. You have a pant to help you. You're not alone. You have a whole pant. Mother said, "This is my family." Yeah. We're all friends. Yeah. These are our family. This this is our family. So our guru is our father. This is our guru family. So we help each other out. Financial problems. What can we say? I mean, most of you, your young people, probably haven't got many financial problems. You're like, I don't know. Mommy and Papa do everything. But what about the adults? What can we use for helping us with financial problems? Hanji, any bani pangti we can use to help ourselves? Ja tu mere wale hai ta kya hum hoye chanda? Tu de sab kich mainu sompya ja tera banda. Lakhmi tootna aave khai khach randa. So this is true, but now there is there is that bit as well. But also, there's accepting that we haven't got that much, yeah. Accepting that we haven't got much. So this other pangti we just said now, je pukde ta ithi raja dukhveche sukh manai. To be happy with what we have, yeah. That what you've given me is enough, yeah. Being happy with what we have is a skill set. We have to teach ourselves our mind is. Now the mind is always going to be hungry, so you have to tell the man to calm down. The body is happy with food and shelter. You know, you look at some people. I remember, like people in England, they say, "Oh, you know, we had like five of us to one room when we first came to this country. It was so tough." And then they say something interesting. They go, "But we were happy." Then they go, "Now we got a big house. Now we're not happy." So the thing we hungered for, it didn't necessarily bring us happiness. We thought happiness was going to be in a big house. It wasn't in the big house. People in their own rooms, they're separate. They don't spend time together. They get more and more dukhi. They sit on each other's shoulders, troubling each other, and they like each other. They have more friends with each other. So sometimes we don't know what we want. So here is to start off with a mindset that happiness does not come from things; it comes from the simple things in life. Sere utke naam japna. If you are with me, I don't need anything else. That's what the real meaning of the pangti is. The real pangti ja tu mere wale hai ta kya mohi chanta. The real happiness comes from naam. सिमरो सिमर सिमर सुख पावो काल कलेश तन माय बिठाओ दिस कलेश इज ऑफ कलजुग ग्रीड 
exams? Can we use a guru as an exa help in exams? What we can do for exams, I find for myself, is to understand not to be lazy. You know, people say, oh, well, whatever will happen, will happen. They don't study, they don't work, and they go, mom is hukum. <laughs> it was hukum, mom. I couldn't do anything, it's just hukum. We have to accept it, la. <laughs> you know? That's not gonna work. <laughs> if you are lazy and you don't study, then Mara says, ape beej, ape hi khau. <laughs> yeah? You get your B, you get your C and D and E, and you have to go back for your retake, it's your own fault. Yeah? Jo mein kiya, so mein paaya, dos na DJ avar jana. Don't blame anybody else. Don't blame the teacher. You take responsibility. So Sikhi is about responsibility. Knowing the right time to do something. What can help you to study more? Get rid of this stuff. When you are young, forget about boyfriends and girlfriends. You'll have plenty more time to study. Think about how many people ruin their exams and studies because of this stuff. Which is not the right time for it anyway. People aren't running off anywhere. When you get to 23, there'll be loads of 23 year olds around you who are also 24, 25 looking to get married. When you're 18, forget about it. There's no need. Focus, focus on your studies. That will help a lot. Then, more importantly, work hard. People are lazy nowadays. They expect to get exam grades for free. No. Work hard. Do your body and then study. Right? You know when your people say to me, Pastor, but I can't do my net name. I'm going to university, study so hard. I'm like, okay. So when you're at university, say to your wife, Guru, okay, I have my exams now. I'm going to do a little bit less part. I'm going to do my net name. I'm not going to do extra baniya. I'm not going to do um, extra simran. I'm just going to do my minimum. I'm going to study hard. When you finish your exams, get your good grades, then how do you pay your Guru back? How do you say thank you? More part and more bani. Yeah? Guru Sahib is saying, you want to make me happy? Increase your red. You want to say thank you to your Guru? Add extra bani to your part. That's the way to say thank you. Yeah? Not to just say, oh Guruji, I'll put some extra money in your Guru. That's not how it works. He gave you everything. Imagine, we say to Maharaj, Maharaj, so kyo vistarit in sab ke chadiya. He gives everything, we give him a little bit more of what he gave us, and we think, it he kya. Kabir ji is saying, Tera tujko sompate, kya lage mera. So what if you gave him extra of what he gave you in the first place, you ain't doing him any favors. Huh? So, bani and red is how you please your guru. Increase your red. Do extra part, maybe take one more step towards him. Maybe before you used to cut your case, now you don't cut your case. That's the way of pleasing your Guru. You know, I do this for you, Maharaj. I keep your head. Life, if life is a problem. <laughs> I can tell you one solution. If life is a problem, take Amrit. If you're fed up with living, then die at the Guru's feet. Maharaj says, Mohe marne ka chao hai. Kabir mohe marne ka chao hai. Marota har ke dwar. Die at the Guru's feet then. Go and take Amrit. If life is really dukhi, there's a guy I know. I'll tell you a true story, this guy I met in America, Singh, he's now a Singh, he was a Munna, he was so dukhi with his life, life was a problem for him. He tried to commit suicide. He actually tried, he failed, he didn't have enough courage to commit suicide. He tried but he failed. So he went to Gurdwara, he said so exactly what he should have done at the beginning. Ab ham chali thakur pe haar, jab ham saran prabhu ki aai raak prabhu paave maar. That's what he should have done at the beginning. He went to his Guru Hidhar Das Maharaj, save me now, I have nothing else to live for, I give myself to you, you do something. He mathatate, he lay there for a long time, while he was laying down, a Keetan Darbar started. He sits down with a Keetan Darbar, he gets blessed with Maha Anand. So much bliss, he sits there for hours, addicted to Keetan. His life changes, now 3-4 hours a day he to Keetan, he's getting so much bliss. All the problems he had, they're sh gone. He doesn't care about them. They're still there, but he has no worry now. Just keep them every day, simran, part, bani. He takes Amrit. His avastha grows so quickly. Because he had nothing to live for, so he threw himself at his Guru's feet. And with that, he got everything. Guru Sahib tells us, Pehla maran kabool. Jeevan ki chad aas. Forget life then. Forget life. Say, I give up. Jeevan ki chad aas. Hoye sabna ke ranaka. 
تو آؤ ہمارے پاس دس از دا وے ٹو اسٹا اسٹا بائی سینگ آر لائف از نو گڈ اونلی لائف ورتھ لیونگ از اے لائف ان یور فیٹ گرو سر اینڈ واؤ ہیز بلیس سو مچ آئی میٹ دس گائے آئی واؤ مین اینڈ سو سون تھری ایئرز آفٹر امرت ہز اوستا واز سو ہائی Yeah? People try lifetimes to get to that level. Three years he got it. Because you surrendered everything. Death. What if death is a problem? What if somebody dies? What do we do then? It's tough, no? Tera kiya mitha lage somebody said, no? Hanna badar na rak vange. That's one way to cope with it. What about reminding yourself? Asa bhi utthe jana. It's a whole shabad about we're going to go there too. They're saying you're crying. What are you crying for? You're going there too. Like I said yesterday, people, you're lying on your deathbed and someone is saying, oh, don't go, don't go, I wish you could stay. Say to them, I wish you could come with me. And they'll say, no, I want to stay, you go. <laughs> They want to stay. So everybody wants to live. And Maharaj is saying, Sahib Samal Pant Nihale Asa Bhi Uthe Jana. Don't think you should cry for that person who's gone. Look after yourself because you're going to go there too. If you go to the beginning of that Shabbat, Mara says, you, Mara says, Oh my sisters, let's meet together. Let us cry, but let's not cry over the person who died. Rovah hai birha tan ka apna sahib sama leha. What is that birha? Birha is the separation from Mahi Guru. That we are all separated. Yeah? Now, Mara says, where the birha is not there, jitan birha na upje, so tan jaan masan. They say it's like a grave where there is no pain of separation from my guru. It's like a dead person. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. You know, you see people, they got like money, they got family, they got all the goods that they want. And everybody's like, oh, this person is so amazing. Mahal is saying, if there's no birha, there's no pain in that person that I'm separated from my guru, it's like a grave. Yeah? Like, jis ka kiya, tis hi liya, hoa tise ka paana. جو تین کر پایا سو آگے آیا اسی کے حکم کرے ہاں وہ کین وی ڈو ہی از ان کنٹرول سو انڈرسٹینڈنگ ہے دا ہی از ڈوئنگ ایوری تھنگ اینڈ نو ون از ایون ان چارج آف اسٹاپ ان دا ہارٹ بیٹ لو وی کین سی ہے ناؤ ہاؤ نی پوکن اسٹاپ دا ہارٹ فرام بیٹنگ نو ون پرسن دا ہارٹ ول کیری آن بیٹنگ وی کان ایون اسٹاپ آور اون بریتھ ایف یو پٹ یور ہینڈ ہیئر آن ٹاپ یور نوز اینڈ ٹرائی ناٹ ٹو بریتھ After some time, a nerve in your body will make you remove your hand and carry on breathing. Asi mar nahi sakde. Jor na jeevan, mar na jor. It's hard to even kill ourselves. And in Sikhi, suicide is one of the worst things. Suicide is not a good thing because God has given you this life and you can't take it away unless He takes it away. So here, suicide is a crime against ourselves. So what does somebody do who is worried about death? They should research into death. There is many levels after death. So Gurbani is talking there's many levels. So one level is like your normal death. You know, they have to get decided like, okay, is this person going to come back? This person going to be judged? So that's Taram Khan, where you get judged. Taram Raj is in charge of Taram Khan. And he judges everything going to happen there. And they know, karmi, karmi, hoi vichar. Some people are going to pass. Most people are going to fail. They're going to have to come back again one day. They will learn something there. Then there's higher levels of spirituality. Yeah? Gyan Khan, Karam Khan. That's spiritually here as well. And also there, there's many places. And the highest level in heaven. There's levels in heaven. The highest level, the spiritual souls go to Sach Khan, where they become very close to Vaheguru. Yeah? And they're like this, they're ikimik hoge, kaal But there's many levels before that as well. So the thing is, the growth doesn't stop here. The growth is still to come. This is just like one blip on our long journey. You know like, um, you know these migratory birds? They migrate a long time, they go traveling. And they go like, you know, these birds are crazy. They go Africa to Europe, you know, they travel. Now on that way, they stop off in places and have a rest. Like, you know, have a bit of a sleep, bit of food, bit of pani, and they move on. So this is like this life. In Bani, it's described, the bird is going for a long journey. It stops somewhere, has a rest, has some pani. Don't forget, you still got to go on. <laughs> So death is not the end of life. If you're dukhi about your life, don't finish your life because there's more life to come. And if you take your life now, you suffer in the next life. 
So you may as well cope with the problem. Now, I'll give you an example. People say, how come people have suffering? You know when they look at this thing, when we don't understand, they have dukhi in life. Some, let's say somebody's got one leg. Somebody goes, oh, poor guy, he's blind or he's deaf or he's dumb or he's blind. He can't walk. How dukhi is that person? But here's the question. How do we get justice from Y Guru? There's a law of karma, right? Whatever you do, you have to get back. So in your last life, you chop off someone's leg. You drive over him. You don't, you're careless, you're on your phone, you're not caring. Bang. You make somebody cripple. How do you pay off that karma? You have to be reborn. Pay off that karma by not having a leg yourself. Then it's justice, right? But now if you can cope with not having a leg, you've paid off the karma. But if you get dukkha, you create more karma. So the things that you have happened in your life, most of them you've chosen. We chose this life in order to go through certain things to pay off the karma that we had to pay off. That there, those on diyo kese? Those karma apniya jo mai kiya so mai paya those na dije avar jana. So Guru Sahib is saying, don't blame anybody else. So even looking at that duk, we can say, e bi da teri da ta. The point was to go over that duk. Not to get so embroiled in it that we ruin our life with it. The point was to transcend it. That was what we came here to do. So don't blame anybody else. Live and accept it. Everything in this life is all like arranged. Kusangat. There is this. And what's the solution to this? Gurmat. Find good Sangat. You know you have a phone. You all understand our phone, right? So there's a video on our channel. It's called, Can I Call God on My iPhone? And it's using the iPhone to explain Sikhi. Right? Any phone. But you know a phone has reception? Right? And there's two types of reception. If you go into Mari Sangat, that's like getting rid of all your reception. Yeah? If you go into good Sangat, that's like getting loads of bars of reception. The more reception you got, the easier the call is going to be, the clearer the call is going to be. There's two types of Sangat. One is calm, Kro, Lo, Monka. In your mind, where is your mind hanging out? Because you could be sitting in Sangat and your mind is in the wrong place. Right? So, that's Mari Sangat. That's Bagala. You know, sitting in the right place or faking it. Like that, that you know, that, uh, the, uh, the bird that stands like this. Yeah? And then the fish is sitting there, the fish thinks, oh, this bird is uh, meditating, you know? And then, black. It's, yeah? That's like a fake, so Bagala. So, we shouldn't be a Bagala, pretend. But at the same time, how do we get the right Sangat? By going into Sangat. So, in our mind, in the right place and our body should be in Sangat as well. So we keep those Sangat and then we're going to have full bars of reception. Then when we make the call, it will go through. If you're sitting there with your friends who are all Shrabi Kababis and then you just put the TV on and there's Simran going on and you say, Why Guru, Why Guru? And you go, Oh, nothing happened to me. Of course nothing happened to you. Your mind is sitting in Mahdi Sangat. Your body is sitting in Mahdi Sangat. What do you expect? A miracle? Why don't you use your body the way it's intended? Go to good Sangat, keep your mind in the right Sangat, and then when you say, Wahai Guru, something might happen. The science, you don't blame the phone because you're down underground in some car park and there's no reception. Anybody blame their phone? They go, no, the phone doesn't work here. Yeah? You understand the phone, so understand Sangat as well. So basically, in this world of Kal Jogya, yeah, the Guru is our protector. We think about our Guru, we should think about them as Sade Sirte Upar. There's a couple of Panktis I have. So I'm going to go through them quickly. They might help. Sena, Saad, Samur, Samur, Sur, Ajant, Sanahang, Tan, Nimrantah. This is obviously Menge Shabad. So I can't read them too publicly because, you know, they're hard. The holy devotees are invincible army of spiritual warriors. What are they protected by? Nimrata. Next one, next punk, in the next Pankti, in that Shabad. Mara says their weapons, Avad Gun Gobind Ramanang, Ot Gur Sabad Kar Tarmaneh. Their shield, you know, like shield is raining, a shield is like your umbrella, right? Guru Sahib is saying, look at what these have. Their weapons are, and their shield is a Guru Shabad. Gurka Shabad Rakhwari, Chauki Chaukir Dhamari. On all four sides of me, the Guru Shabad is like my Chauki, my Chauki Dar, my protector. Pai Amoli Para Toli Mukat Jugat Dar Khola Kaho Nanak Ho Nirpa Hoye So Prav Mera Ola 
yeah kaho nanak ho nirpa hoi we have this ola ola is like a shield like a, like a defense mara says my guru is my defense i have god has become my defense what is the thing that happens to me pai amoli para toli yeah mukt jugat dar khola kaho nanak ho nirpa hoi so prab mera ola if you follow this path of sikhi you will live in this world fearless i'll give you the idea what fearless means you know this morning we were leaving uh, this afternoon we were leaving from the house to come here and i said look me pair again paisa goes no problem i have an umbrella he is not fearless of stepping out into maya and dealing with the world he has his umbrella with him so he has no fear of the world if you bring your guru into your life if you bring the guru into your life and you have this shabad inside you you will become fearless you will go into places that people are scared of you will fight a battle that people are scared of fighting because you will say my guru is with me this is my ola this is my shield my kavach kavach means my armor yeah this is my kavach i walk into this world because guru and wahe guru are with me yeah jis ta sahib dada hoy tis no maar na sakhe koi yeah guru is going to be our protector i want to repeat shabad is not just reading bani is kamai karni naam gurmat naam mera pran sakhai har kirat hamri reh ras these two things that they with us gurmat and naam then that way we will be close to our guru all the time and he will protect us you have to have the umbrella to have an umbrella sorry to, i know it's a bit strange but you can't just have an umbrella without be, having an umbrella with you you can't say i have an umbrella when you don't have one you must have your guru with you you must have the shabad with you and then you he will protect you but if you haven't got him with you ji bani ni kant ni naam ni japya simran ni kita and you say guru sir protect me and doesn't happen cuz maya is burning you these things that make you dukhi you're depressed because you didn't put the shabad inside wahe guru wahe If you enjoyed this video please like comment share and subscribe please donate and help spread guruji's message link is in the description below wahe guruji ka khalsa wahe guruji ki fateh wahe guru wahe